You know, someone out there who just wants to be talked about, and he's doing a great job because I, I can't not talk about this. That's going to be Octane's. Throw some sensor news in there, maybe some Karma, some Clayster. Why not have half the Call of Duty community all involved over what we talked about a lot last season? That being some pros or some teams just late to scrims or not showing up. If you guys remember CDL first season just last year, I, I mean, we talked about this probably every other week about players being plenty of late, even players complaining about their own teammates being late. Arsides may be a part of that, but Octane taking to Twitter to call out the Royal Ravens after apparently he waited over an hour. He's not happy. As he said, one hour, seriously, and then adding Paul as well as Shawnee and of course Zach as well. And later following up saying, how is it that professional Call of Duty players cannot sit in their chairs for two scrims? Literally, your job is just sit there and play the effing game. And Coach Joey also getting involved saying they're going to leave if one instance of snaking. This coming after a tweet from Paul previously, as he said, he's kind of just done with the rules. And then, of course, kind of hinting that he might be snaking. And Clayster replying to this first tweet saying, hold up, weren't y'all one of the worst at that last year? That being the surge last year, maybe being late to scrims or just not being there. To which Octane says, yes, then he retired and we were never late again. That referencing Karma, who was a part of the surge and retired last season, and maybe him being the one who was late to scrims in practice. To which Clayster says, fair enough. And then Octane goes, ah, now I have idiots in my mentions saying I'm disrespectful. And then Karma actually jumps in saying, all good. It's not like the days I was there on time were any better. LMAO, uh, then Octane and him go back and forth. We accomplished the same amount scrimming and not playing at all. Karma says, and I swear every day I was on time, the other team was there over it. I remember every day you got on time, the other team would just torch. And then lastly, Octane saying, the amount of time I spent sitting in a lobby, twiddling my effing thumbs, waiting for teams this year, like it's the easiest thing in the world. We play the same times every day, just show up on time and shoot at me. I'm begging. Uh, whew, I mean, what a loaded thread that obviously was. Surge last year. I mean, there, there was a time I was going to sit down and try and break down everything Octane had talked about. Of course, we know the behind-the-scenes struggles and the struggles with that lineup, so it's not surprising to hear them say they did just as well when they actually showed up for scrims than when they did not whatsoever. That was um, a problematic case of the first season, but it's always interesting to see if that still continued to be a problem. When you think about Optic Chicago bringing on Dashy, Hex has mentioned one of the first things he said was you're going to start being on time because Dashy and TJ have been called out in the past. <laughs> I mean, you understand that just about every pro player out there probably could be called out for being late at times. According to Octane, it seems that some teams may be more prevalent than others. So thank you, Octagos, or Octa, Octa, Octa. I was trying to think of other words that start with Oct, and I could only think of Octopus, and that just sounded kind of mean. So thank you, Octane, for the thread. Always enjoy reading them. Speak of the devil, guys, something that uh, never gets tiring. Seems to happen every single season, and a character we are going to talk about we're going to talk about sometime soon because I think you guys are going to be very interested. It's actually Sensor, I believe with an advertisement posting why he is not retiring from Call of Duty. This man, you know, it seems like every year he is doing these kind of things. Every year, especially last, I was maybe hoping this was his time. It seems this year it's still not his time and he's still not giving up. Sensor posting why he is not retiring yet from Call of Duty. A team in challengers and not knowing what my next move is gonna be. So guys, this basically leads me in the same exact position that I have been in literally for the past, what, two years now? Cause Modern Warfare and now this season, it is extremely, extremely hard guys. And I don't wanna make excuses and I don't wanna sit here and just say, I'm gonna win Call of Duty champs next season. And I'm just gonna be a world champion again and keep on saying the exact same things over and over and over again. And literally not even being in the pro league because that is to me, quite frankly, just embarrassed. I am by no means guys, a Call of Duty superstar like a simp or an abeezy where I'm just going to go into a game and I'm just going to be the best player in the lobby just completely having my way with everyone just going bam 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 gunning everybody down like I don't have that superstar talent but I have intangibles that I bring to a squad that every single team need and that's why I've had success in the past guys never in my entire Call of Duty career when I was winning and I was beating the best like formal and crim six and scump and you know, aches and all these amazing Call of Duty legends or even like some of the newer guys too. I've never been the most talented player. But what I do have is this belief in myself. And I have this belief that things are going to work itself out. And I have this way of manifesting things to becoming a reality. And I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of people like to joke on me and they like to clown on me because sometimes I say things and I genuinely believe them. I actually do think that I'm going to win Call of Duty champs and I'm going to get a ring. 
but then they look at my performances in a tournament or they look at my current situation or the fact that I became a content creator and they just have this really bad stigma about it. For some reason, people think that being a content creator and being a Call of Duty pro player, unless if you're scum, isn't something that could be obtainable. And I believe that you can do both. I believe that you can be the best in both. And that's the thing that I've always wanted to strive for. And you guys can think what you want about that. I think we're gonna talk more about this in the coming days. So I'll leave it there. Very last slasher actually taken to Twitter after what we called the LA Thieves nightmare. And I wanna also apologize to Kenny because I mistakenly said that he had COVID when his issue for being benched quickly for temp and then of course being brought back on was a non-COVID issue. That's totally on me, but speak of the devil, another person who actually was benched, that being Slasher, taking to Twitter to clarify this was not his decision. He would not be benching himself. That around rumors, and I guess I should say resurfacing of clips from last season, saying he would maybe semi-retire if this season was online. People thinking now that because he's on the bench, and it's still online. Maybe he'll just take a break for the remainder of the season. Can he be traded? Does he want to be traded? Do teams want him? Can they afford him? Do LA Thieves want to give him away? A lot of questions, obviously, because first season being on the bench was pretty much a prison statement. We, we will see what happens. And I should have said prison sentence. I'm so off today. Drink your water. Drink your coffee. Who knows what's going on? Because I don't. I'll see you guys back here next time. Take care.